Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson one of the simple series of my RISC-V assembly programming tutorials. And today we're going to be looking at a little basic example that's really designed as a sort of starting point for you to um, do your own little um, RISC-V assembly experiments. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at two simple functions, one to show the contents of a register to the screen in hexadecimal, and another to read in from the keyboard some a series of characters and convert those to hexadecimal and store them in a register. So we can take in a value in a register, and then we can show a value of a register back to the screen. And if you wanted, you could put any commands in between, like an AND command or an XOR command or whatever you wanted to test, to see how the values in the registers are being changed by those commands. So as I say, this is intended as a simple example for you to play around with RISC-5. Now we're going to try this out on the RAS assembly um, simulator, as usual. Now this um, example was taken from my new book called Learn Multi-Platform Assembly with Chibi Akamas Volume 2. Looks like the first book, we're covering five new assembly languages. Arm um, Thumb, 65816, 6809, PDP 11 and RISC 5. And you don't need to have read the first book to read it. It's a totally self-contained book. So if you want to support my content, you can buy the book from Amazon. If you want though, you can just get the example for free on the website. You don't need to buy the book to get to today's example. So let's go over and let's try it out. So we're going to be looking at the read reg example today. So let's compile this and let's run it. So if we use the assemble function here and then the run function here, now the first thing it will do is it will show an example value in A1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if I get my mouse under control here, and then I'm going to now type in a value in the keyboard. So I'm going to type in 9876-5432. And the that has read in the eight keys from the keyboard, and it has loaded that value into A1 here. So we have read in a value from the keyboard, loaded it into a register and shown that register back to the screen. And as I say, that is the purpose of today's example. Now, this builds on the previous example, which was the Hello World example. Now, the Hello World example, we used a function called printchar. This used an eCall, which is an operating system call, and we load the number of the operating system call into A7. Now, the function 11 of the operating system, the um, simulator in this case, the RAS simulator, um, function 11 will show the character in A0 to the screen. So this E call will show a character to the screen. As I say, this is a RAS simulator function. The E call is a defined command within the um, RISC-V assembly language. However, what th that function will do will depend on the system. But as I say, this simulator works in the way that function 11 in A7 will show A0 to the screen. Now, as well as showing characters to the screen, we also need to read characters. Now, to read characters, we're using function 12. Now, we load 12 into A7, and then we run the E call, and that will read in a character. Now, that will load in a character into A0, and that's what we'll use to read in characters to our registers. First of all, though, let's take a look at the show reg function. Now, the show reg A1 function will show the contents of A1 to the screen. You can see here at the start, We've loaded the immediate value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in hexadecimal into A1, and then we've called that subroutine. And you can see at the start here of our execution, that was shown to the screen. So how's this show reg A1 function going to work? Well, the first thing we're doing here is we're allocating four bytes on the stack. We're subtracting four from the stack pointer and putting the return, return address onto the stack. And that's so we can call the print char subroutine to show characters to the screen. Now, we will load in A0 with whatever character we want to show. And first of all, we're going to show a label so that we can tell what is the um, register that we're showing and separate the label from the actual bytes of data. So we're going to show an A and then a 1 and then a colon to the screen with three successive executions of the print char function. Then what we're going to do is we're going to show all eight of the nibbles in the 32-bit register. Now a nibble is four bits and the registers are 32 bits, so we're going to need to do this eight times. So we're using A4 as our counter here and we want to show A1 to the screen, but we're moving it into A3, which is effectively going to be our sort of um, temporary variable and we're going to use the bits in A3 in this execution. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the four bits that we've processed out of A3, but for us to actually use these to show to the screen, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take the most significant four bits from A3 and store them as the least significant in A0. So that's what that first line is doing. It's taking these bits, the most significant four, and storing them in the least significant in A0. And then the second line there is shifting the remaining bits along so that the next execution can do the same thing. 
what we're effectively doing here is getting the four bits that we want to show to the screen. What we're going to do next is we're going to actually use those and we're going to um, show them as a character. So the first thing we're doing here is we are removing any remaining bits except for the least significant four from the A0 register. And then we're adding the character code of the zero to that value. Now A0 now nearly contains the correct ASCII value for the four bits in hexadecimal. The problem is that hexadecimal bit because while zero to nine will work fine, a to F will not because there's a space in between in the ASCII character set. So what we're going to do next is we're going to compare the character in A0 and see if that is less than the colon character. If it's less than the colon character, that means it's a number. And that means we are, we've are we got the correct ASCII value for the digit that we're trying to show to the screen. However, if it's not, then we need to do some conversion. And so what we're doing here is we're adding seven to correct the A, B, C, D, E, F part of the ASCII um, hex values. And we'll just test this. We'll just make sure this is working. So if I try A, B, C, D, E, F, one, two, three, you can see here A, B, C, D, E, F, 1, 2. So we are correctly showing these hexadecimal values to the screen. Now, if we didn't have this correction part here, if we weren't adding 7 and doing that comparison there, the one to, the 0 to 9 part would work fine, but then A would become probably a colon or something, and it, or they would become random characters. So we're, we're having to do that conversion to, to keep these as hexadecimal. Now, once our hexadecimal character is correct, we can then just run the print char routine to show it to the screen. We're then subtracting one from A4, which is our counter of how many iterations we need to do. Remember, we need to do eight for the eight nibble, four bit nibbles. And then we're repeating to show the next character. And again, we're going to shift another four bits out of A3 into A0 and do the whole thing again. Now, once we've shown our register to the screen, we are printing a space character to separate that from any um, following data, like our data entry there. And then we're simply returning by popping the return address off the stack and running a return command. So that's how we're showing a register to the screen. Now, reading one in, in some ways, is kind of similar. So basically, we're going to kind of do the opposite, if you will. We run our read reg function here, which will read a an 8 nibble value into the register A1, and then we're showing it to the screen here. How do we actually do that? Well, again, we're going to have to do eight iterations, and we're going to have to read in a character using function 12 of the equals there, and that will read in a character into A0. Okay, well, we're going to need to compare to the colon again, and if the character is greater than or equal to a colon, well, we're going to need to subtract 7 again to convert the letters into the correct hexadecimal values. Now, if the value is a 0 to a 9, then we don't need to do that, so we would skip over in that case, and we would end up either way at this point. Now, what we're doing next is we're subtracting 48, and that is effectively subtracting ASCII 0 there, and that is so that we're now converting into a hexadecimal value. And then what we're doing here is we're masking and only keeping the bottom nibble. So we've only got four bits retained there. We're then shifting A1 to the left by four bits, and we're awing A0, the character we just read in that's now been converted to a four-bit nibble, into A1 there, and that is get building up A1 one iteration at a time, moving four bits in, shifting them across, next iteration moving another four bits, shifting them across, moving another four bits in each time. And so with the eight iterations, the first four bits will become the most significant four. We are then just re decreasing our loop count and repeating until we've done all eight nibbles, all eight characters for our hexadecimal value. We're then showing a space to the screen and we're returning. And that's how this is working. That's how we're able. I keep pressing the wrong um, compile button there. I'm used to my other assembler, which uses F6 there. And that is how we're able to use this. And as I say, we can type in 0A, 0B, 0C, 0D, or something like that. And it will show it to the screen. As I say, this is intended as a simple example that you can work on and build into your own little programs. So there we go. That's the end of today's example. As I say, if you like what you've seen, please consider buying my book. If you want to learn more Risk Five, this isn't all that's available, and you don't need to buy my book. I shouldn't tell you that, but you don't. You can do a search for Chibi Akamas and Risk Five on YouTube, and you'll find I've got a whole range of um, tutorials on Risk Five. So there's plenty you can learn for free. So get learning if that's what you want to do. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.